Hey, welcome to my video. This is a tutorial for how to draw a dragon head. I'm going to start with a couple of generic dragons, and then later in the video, I'm going to show you how to draw a Nightwing from Wings of Fire and a Night Fury from How to Train Your Dragon. So let's go. I start out as one does with a poorly drawn circle we're gonna erase it later, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but yes, I start out with a circle, and then I draw an S shape, which is going to represent the neck for now. Next, I draw a box connected to the circle, and there you go, that's your dragon head. We're all done here. Okay, maybe not quite. But we are done with the general skeleton. This is the step where you want to have your pose down, the head angle down, because from here on out we're going to draw on top of these lines and changing the pose after that is going to be a bit harder. The next step is to flesh out the neck. I use our original S shape as a guideline to add musculature to the neck essentially. I make sure that the neck connects all the way to the top of the skull and that the front of the neck connects before the box meets the circle. I think this especially is important for making your dragon look a little more believable. Next I sketch in the jaw muscles. This is essentially a rounded triangle that starts where the box meets the circle and ends over halfway up the skull. Next, I define the top of the head. I draw a dip where I imagine the skull meets the snout. I usually place this slightly in front of where the circle starts. And then again, remember that the corner of the jaw, you want it to be within the neck, not at the very start of the neck. That way this dragon won't look like it has a super skinny neck that can't really support the weight of its head. Next I start to define the lower jaw. I add a curve where the chin is, then I make the line of the jaw go in slightly, and then it comes out again slightly as we move towards the back of the jaw where those big muscles are. Then I go in and add the mouth. For this dragon, the mouth lies pretty low on its face. I would say it is only about a quarter of the way up the head. This is certainly something you can change, but I would advise not to put the mouth anywhere above the top of the jawline because that wouldn't necessarily work anatomically. Next, I'll add the nose, followed shortly by the eye. I draw that eye under and slightly in front of the dip that shows where the snout is meeting the skull. This is something that I change very little in my drawings. I think this placement is pretty important for making your dragon look like a believable creature and not like something more alien. Of course, alien dragons are perfectly valid, but this is just what I usually do and what I like my dragons to look like. Next, I'll draw in the horn. I sometimes do this before I draw in the face, sometimes after. This is kind of depending on your preference. I kind of struggled with this one a little bit. I change it later, so don't worry. It looks better in the end. On this next layer, I'm kind of redlining stuff that I think about while I'm drawing this dragon. So you see these two circles, one for the skull, one for the snout. The snout circle is quite a bit smaller than the skull circle, and to me, that makes dragons, in general, look quite elegant, having a smaller snout than their skull. 
Of course, if you change this, it will still look like a dragon. It will just have a bit of a different feel to it. Maybe more of a brutish feel or a stronger feel. As I was kind of struggling to get the horn quite right, I ended up drawing this line. The line starts in front of the snout, crosses through the nose, through the eye, and into the horn. I think making this line ended up giving me a horn that looks more cohesive with the skull as a whole. I also will quite often draw this line when I'm struggling with the nose versus eye placement. I find they look really good when they're drawn kind of along the same line. That way it prevents you from having, you know, the eye too high or low on the head. It, it helps me. Hopefully it'll also help you. So now I draw a larger version of the eye up off to the side in red. I draw the curves such that this circle fits inside the eye. That circle represents the eyeball and the lines I draw for the eye are actually the skin around the eyeball, if that makes sense. It helps me to envision how a spherical eye fits inside this shape. Hopefully it'll help you guys too. I don't know, I just thought I would point that out. So then I start going through and adjusting things a little bit. I draw a line from slightly past the corner of the jaw down to connect with the rest of the neck. This kind of defines where the throat itself is, and it gives a little bit of a hint that there are multiple muscle groups in the neck. So now, the fun part, I get to go in and add what I like to call the accessories. These are things like ears, horns, spikes, frills, fur, you name it. Pretty much anything you can imagine is gonna work here. My general rule of thumb is that stuff that goes on the back of the neck starts out small gets really big right towards the back of the head, like where the horns are, and then kind of gets small again towards the end of the neck. This is just an aesthetic that I like. You can totally change this, and the dragon is still gonna look great. All right, on to dragon number two. I'm using pretty much the same techniques as before. I start with a circle and I have a box for the head. The only thing is for the neck, I don't start with a single line, I start with a neck just because I was too lazy to re-demonstrate it. You guys, you, you get it, you get how to draw a neck. So here I'm starting the jawline. Again, it's a roughly triangular shape that ends greater than halfway up the head. This jawline is a little bit more rounded and a bit blockier than the one we drew before. This dragon overall is going to be a bit blockier than the first one. So now I'm detailing the top of the head. This dragon has pretty much no dip between the skull and the snout. And the snout is a bit of a different shape where it doesn't slant diagonally, it just tapers towards the front. Hopefully you know what I mean by this, but worst case scenario, you can kind of go back and look at the first dragon's snout, look at this dragon's snout, and kind of get at what I'm saying. Now I'm moving right into the nostril and the eye. And there's that line going from the front of the snout through the eye to the horn. 
I was playing it safe this time. I just wanted the horn to look good right off the bat. Here I go in and I draw those circles again, one for the snout, one for the skull. This dragon's head still tapers toward the snout, but the size difference between these circles is much less. And because of that, we get a dragon that has kind of a blockier looking head. So the rest of this clip is cleanup and finishing touches like spikes, so I'm going to speed this up and the next time voiceover Ash is going to see you, we will be working on our Nightwing. And I'm back. So again, this clip, I'm going to show you how to draw a Nightwing from Wings of Fire. I start out very much like I always do, with a poorly drawn circle, a neck shape, and a box. I kept the overall proportion of the head, meaning mostly the length of that box, the same as my other dragons, and I think it turned out looking quite a bit like Wings of Fire style. But of course, if you want to change that, it's still going to look like a dragon and it's probably still going to look like a Wings of Fire dragon. Anyway, one of the biggest things that I've noticed looking at Wings of Fire style dragons is that they're mostly drawn with a very square looking jaw. I tried to draw that here, it's much less of a triangle than I have drawn before. I've seen it drawn even more square, so take that into account. I have also noticed that a lot of the dragons drawn in the Wings of Fire style have a very pronounced dip between their skull and their snout. And the front of the snout, again, is quite blocky. Even when it's more of a beak shape, it's still pretty much a vertical line from the top of the nose to the bottom of the chin, with a slight slant, but again, overall quite blocky. Nightwings in particular have this sort of a beak at the front of their snout. And of course they have straight horns, which I added a little tiny bit of a curve to mine just cause I like that aesthetically, but technically it's a straight horn. Then moving on to the lower jaw, I do add a curve for the chin. I do keep the lower jaw a bit more level less of an in than out shape, it's more of a straight line. I follow up pretty soon with the nostril and the eye. Again, I keep them generally along the same line as each other. There's not too much different than my normal dragons. I think the only thing is the nostril is a bit closer to the front of the snout. And the rest is mostly clean up. I do add a line for the throat and Nightwings have spikes along the back of their neck, so I add those as well. And of course, I add an ear. I also end up adding a shape around the eye, which represents sort of a scaled brow ridge. Um, I don't really detail it too much, but it's there if you want an example of where I would personally put a brow ridge. I'm going to speed up through the rest of this so the video doesn't get too repetitive, and I'll see you at the Night Fury portion of the video. Alright. Welcome to the Night Fury section. This is definitely the type of dragon I have least experience in drawing, but obviously it's one of the most beloved dragons, one of my most beloved dragons, so I thought I'd give it a shot, and I think it came out pretty good. You'll see the first thing I do is make the neck much, much thicker. Night Furies have quite thick necks. It's pretty cute, honestly. And then I go straight into the head shape, which is 
kind of like a squished oval. It's definitely flatter on the chin side than it is on the top of head side. And then I go into drawing his little, his cute little horns, ears, flaps, gills. I don't, I don't really know what they are, but they're super cute. Here I actually redline where I imagine those jaw muscles to be. It kind of helps me figure out where to put the eye and the nostril. But in terms of the Night Fury design itself, they don't really have super pronounced jaw muscles like this. So I keep it in the red and take it out later. Next, we're moving on to the portion that I kind of struggled with a bit. The Night Fury has a pretty big eye, a tiny little nostril that's located very close to the front and bottom of its snout, and its mouth, so cute, so little. This guy has almost no chin, and he is adorable. For the rest of this clip, I fiddle around with the eye size and position, the nose a little bit, and how large to make the mouth. He does end up looking pretty dang cute at the end, but it takes me a second to get there. So I'll speed this clip up and come back at the end for my final thoughts and tips. Here's where I decide this guy is looking pretty good, so I write out some things that I learned. First, Night Furies have thick, pudgy, cute necks. They have a very rounded snout. And like I mentioned before, almost no chin at all. And of course, the little Flaps are definitely reminiscent of axolotls, so if you want to see a really cute animal in real life who totally looks like Toothless, look up axolotls. And that brings me to the end of this video. I hope this was helpful for someone out there, and I hope you go draw a dragon. Have a great day. I'll, I'll see you around. <laughs>